Hey guys, there's one Ball Player here. Today I've got a review for you on the Dangerous Power Threshold. And first thing we're going to do is unbox it. Now I don't have everything that came with new, but I do know what was in there as far as, you know, I'll point out what was supposed to be in here. So go ahead and move the camera down here a little bit and go ahead and box this thing. So open it up here. It comes in the standard uh, Dangerous Power box, as you can see. Uh, pretty much as all their guns come. Um, go ahead and open it up for you. And inside we would have the gun. As you can see. Very nice gun. Go ahead and set that to the side. And then right here you would have your macro line. And right here you would have your keychain. And take this first layer of foam off. In here you have your two piece barrel. This is a 14 inch 689 or excuse me 690 barrel. As you can see, screw it together. And 68, don't know if you guys can see that, but 690 uh, barrel, 14 inch. And then in here you would have your manual, your uh, dangerous power barrel sock, your little parts kit or o ring kit. And I believe that's everything that came in the box when you got it. So we're going to go ahead and set the box to the side. And show you the gun with the barrel on it. I'm going to move my screen up here so I can see. Okay. So go ahead and put the barrel on the gun for you guys. Uh, as many of you know, this gun is not in production. They only made less than 500 of these. I believe the exact number is 450 something. So they are pretty rare guns. But you still see several uh, come up on eBay and stuff like that on PB Nation and Tech BB and stuff like that. So you're going to see some of them up for sale, but they are very few and far between. Um, so first thing we're going to go on this is pretty much the key features. The 14 inch barrel, like I said, the 690 bore, fairly accurate, um, got a decent amount of porting on the tip there. Uh, the bore is, I believe, it's about four to five inches, I believe, uh, the actual bore length on it. Uh, then we have the next feature on it, and I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in here. Sorry for this shuffle, but I don't have a remote for my camera, so it's kinda hard to do. Uh, next thing we got is the Dangerous Power Clamping Feed Neck, as you can see right there. This feed neck is extremely nice, uh, perfect height, and is adjustable for whichever way you like the feed neck to be on whichever side. Uh, this will fit any hopper you want in it. I've put, myself, I've put on rotors, magnets, halos, um, yeah, uh, I can't even think. Uh, the other, Some of the other hoppers, I've yet to find one that does not fit. Uh, very nice speed neck, standard from Dangerous Power. Uh, next thing we have is the wraps on off ASA. As you can see, flips up, you're degassed. Flip it on and you're gassed up. Very nice uh, addition to the gun itself. One of the best on offs on the market. So very nice with that. Also comes standard with a rail. This uh, The rail right here can be flipped around that way or the other way to make it kind of a uh, drop or not really a drop forward but move the, the ASA up a little bit if you flip it around. Uh, the reason why it's on this way is because some of your tanks, like your Gorillas, and I know I had a couple of other tanks that would not screw into the back of this. With this flipped around, it would be hitting the back, so you can flip it around to where you can fit any tank on there. Uh, next is the trigger, as you can see here. The trigger is decent, uh, better than the stock ones on their newer guns, like their G3s and stuff. But does have a little tiny bit of side to side wobble uh, in the trigger and a little bit of trigger play there. But overall, a decent trigger for a stock trigger. Uh, the next, we have the regulator. Uh, really good regulator, have yet to have any issues with it. Really nice, uh, easy adjuster on the bottom. Uh, it is a swivel regulator, so you can put the macro line on either side you want. So you can, if you're right handed or left handed, however you want to do that. Um, I think that's about it. The has a board. The board in here is a eight, eight. Uh, excuse me, a can't think eight 
modes on the board. I do not have them in front of me right now. I don't have the manual, but there are eight modes. I believe six or five different ones, and like two of them have two or three of them have uh, 15 balls per second cap, and then some of them, and then the same mode, but 20 balls per second cap. Highest you can go on here is 25 balls per second capped. So there's the gun. Uh, next thing we're going to go ahead and do is show you how easy it is to maintain this gun. And I'm actually going to lube it up and everything where we go. So the first thing you're going to want to do is take your barrel off, set that to the side. Um, next you're going to want to take your Allen key set, which I've already got mine situated here. Uh, first thing you're going to do is you're going to take your 316 Allen key and take out the bolt. This is extremely easy gun to maintain. Uh, very few parts in it at all. So go ahead and unscrew the back cap. Pull the back cap out. As you can see, it's got two O-rings on that. And then stick your finger down the breech and pop your bolt out. That is all there is. Now one thing I do want to make note of that confused me at first. As you can see, the O-rings, there are four or three O-rings on the bolt. This is not supposed to have an O-ring. Uh, it's made that way. You can look in the manual and everything. This is to not have an O-ring. So just so you guys know that, it only has three O-rings, the front one here, and then the two on the middle section. So there's the bolt and the back cap, as you can see. That's your only moving part in this gun. Then the bolt goes forward. So very easy to maintain that way. Gonna go ahead and wipe off the bolt here. Just clean it up here. Gonna relube it for you guys. Uh, just take your favorite lube, whatever you want to use, and that's gonna go. Just uh, whatever you guys like to use. I'm just gonna take a little bit of hater sauce here, or yeah, hater sauce, and rub it on there. Don't have to put an extreme amount uh, compared to like spool valves, or yeah, like, spool valves and stuff like that. But just enough to where you can't, don't have like major gaps in the. O-rings. Um, I'm going to do this real fast. Put a little bit on the bolt itself, as you can see there. Put a tad bit on this front one. There we go. Sorry for taking so long, but I'm planning on using this probably a couple more times here. So, there you go. So I'll just kind of put a little bit of lube on that. Set that down uh, to the side for a second. And take your back cap and do the same. I'm going to wipe it off with my rag here. Take some uh, hater, put it on there. Just don't overload it. You don't want to have just gobs of it on there. Uh, it won't work very good. You'll get, it'll just not work like normally you can put on spool valves. You can just dump the move on them. So there you go. And go ahead and wipe off the front of this bolt here. Go ahead and stick the bolt back in the gun. Take your back cap and stick it in. And I'm gonna wipe off my hands, got a little bit of move on in there. Okay. I'm gonna take your Allen key and simply screw it in. Um, it's really that easy to maintain. That's all you gotta maintain in this gun. I'm gonna go ahead and show you the other parts of the gun that you might have to maintain, but that's it. Basically, if you're having a problem with it, first thing I would do is replace the battery. Second thing I do is move the back, the bolt, and the back cap. Pretty much that's all you're going to have to do. Now, today I'm actually going to take apart the reg for you and show you the only other part of the gun you can actually maintenance, and that is really easy as well. So, first thing you're going to do is you're going to take your uh, macro line off like that, and then you're just going to grab the reg above the swivel, like right here above it and just turn it. If it's on there real tight you might have to get a allen key and take the bottom but you will then have to adjust your FPS. So go ahead and take that off. Set your gun to the side. Set mine right there. And then you have your regulator. Uh, only thing you gotta do is gonna take the biggest allen key I have is the 3 8 and you're going to stick it in the top here and most generally you can do this by hand. Just grab it and then undo it and I don't like using the allen keys too much in there I like mainly doing it with my hand um, as you can see you got the o-ring on the top and then your o-ring down here uh, 
Then next inside you're gonna have your go ahead and flip it upside down. Your uh, shim stack and the uh, sh yeah the shim stim or whatever you call that part the part that the shims are on. And that's it. That's all you've got in there. So you can go ahead and set this to the side. Um, I'm actually gonna take my microfiber and just kind of clean inside here. Just get out any excess lube and set that there. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is you want to always make sure you see how your shims are on oops, excuse me, uh, your shims are on the thing. You don't want to ever put these in wrong. So I'm just basically going to take and set those right like that. As you can see there is two o-rings on that. I'm going to clean that off here real fast and re -lube it. So I'm going to take my hater sauce again here I'll simply put it on the gun, like so, and loop that up a little bit. If you see any, if you can see any like damaged O-ring, you're gonna want to replace it. And I'm gonna have an extra set of uh, O-rings to replace them with. That's one thing I almost always uh, tell people is if you're gonna buy a new gun. Uh, always go to O-Ring Monkey or online. There's a place on eBay that has a sometimes just depending on the kit has them a little bit cheaper than O-Ring Monkey, but you can just buy the O-Ring kits for them. Uh, a lot of times they are way cheaper than the the manufacturer, so I suggest going there first and just buy get, picking up your set yourself a set of at the minimum three uh, rebuild kits, to complete rebuild kit O-Ring rebuild kits. Um, if you plan on keeping the gun for a while, I'd go for even like, you know, four to five. Um, I just think it's probably, it's always better to have enough and in, instead of wishing you had them. So that's definitely what I would do if you're going to plan on buying a new gun, especially if you're buying used. I'm going to go ahead and stick my shims on here. You can actually put a tiny bit of uh, uh, lube on those, oops, excuse me, uh, lube on those if you would like but I choose not to and there's that and then you're gonna want to take your last o-ring here clean it up on the actual thing and I'm gonna have to take this one off so take your allen or excuse me your o-ring pick just kinda take that one off clean it up a little bit here and go from there um, sorry for taking so long guys but I just figured I wanted to do, instead of having tons of short videos, to combine them all into this. And this is pretty much my first in-depth uh, review, so let me know what you guys think. So, I'm going to put that O-ring back on there. Simply take a tiny bit of lube on here. Just, oops, that didn't work. Put it on the threads instead. Just take a tiny bit and just stick it on the O-ring. keep putting it on the threads and just kind of make sure that's all good and you don't want to gobs on it on there again like you can see I don't have that much on there uh, there's a little bit in the threads there get out but basically just to make sure that it's gonna seal now you're gonna want to take your reg again your reg seat or excuse me the reg part of it you're gonna want to take and flip it upside down and simply stick it over your stat or your shims and then press down to make sure it kind of pops in there. Then you're going to take the top and screw that back on there. And I like to take my Allen key and just snug it. I mean, don't over tighten it. Just simply take and give it a good kind of turn there to make sure it's tight. And there's your reg. And that's the maintenance on the gun. So we're going to go ahead and stick the gun back on here and cont or the reg back on the gun and continue with our review. So I'll just screw it back in here. Make sure it's tight. Okay, and then stick your macro line back in. There we go. Okay, so there's your gun back together again. Wipe it off. Make sure you get all the excess lube off. And that's how to. That's all you have to do to maintain it. Now, like I said, you don't need to do the reg hardly at all. I mean, that's the first time. That's the, not, excuse me, 
that's like the first time I've done it in probably probably five months okay I don't I've just never seen the point in always um, doing that when you do the other one there's no sense in it so that's how to loop the marker the next thing we're going to go to is the performance the performance of this gun is extremely uh, probably the middle of the line as far as that goes uh, efficiency I could probably get about six to seven pods off of a 45 45 tank or excuse me a 48 45 tank I'm getting about probably about three pods uh, or excuse me two pods per thousand psi in a 48 45 so I'm guessing probably about seven pods would be your maximum to get out of these shooting at 280 feet per second so the efficiency is pretty good on it the um, yeah I cannot even think the downtime I have yet to have this gun go down on me I've played with what I use my uh, G3 or excuse me not mine but I they use a G3 as my the main gun and then use this as a backup anytime my G3 has gone down this has been up there I mean just perfectly use just I mean I've never had a problem with it my G3 has gone down twice and every time I've been able to pull out this gun go play finish the day out come back emotionally the G3 was just a simple pro fix but it's always there I mean I've yet to have it go down uh, next thing would be the accuracy accuracy depends on the barrel the 6.9 bore barrel works good for any paint pretty much unless you're getting ginormous uh, paint walls but if you're shooting any kind of paint the 6.9.0 works pretty good I would suggest getting a barrel kit the barrel kits you can bore your paint to exactly what your paint is and your accuracy will be amazing I mean I use a reds barrel kit on it and it is phenomenal what you can do with it so accuracy is uh, pretty good on the gun with the stock barrel but if you have smaller paint you're going to want to have a smaller bore so I always recommend having a barrel kit kick this uh, or recoil some people call it recoil kick hardly any at all I mean I've owned a lot pretty much all the mid-end guns and this is a little bit higher than that but the mid-end guns are you can get like the mini and the yeah basically the mini that has a little bit you'll be shooting and you'll watch the gun go up as you're shooting uh, if you don't pay attention to it and don't hold it back down I have yet to see this with this gun this gun shoots I mean pretty much has no kick at all the um, the uh, excuse me the as far as it goes with paint I've yet to have a barrel break in this, I've yet to have a chop, I've yet to have anything. Now I have used only the die rotor on this gun. Uh, like I said, I've put other hoppers on here but I've only shot it with a die rotor. Die rotor keeps up with it great. I've yet to have a broken ball on this gun. I mean, it's fantastic. I shoot ultra evil and evil basically are the paints I shoot and I've yet to have a break. Super not easy on paint. I mean, you're not going to have to worry with that at all. The kind of one of the main things about this gun is being it is no longer in production parts are harder to get now that is for outside as far as your regs um, stuff like that bolts you can't really find a stock bolt but Tech T still makes the uh, the L7 I believe bolt engine for this gun so you can still find a bolt they're seventy dollars I think for the Tech T bolt so they're a bit more expensive but like I said, you can still find them. Solenoid use the exact same one as the Dangerous Power G3. O-rings are almost exactly like the G3. There's like one difference. So O-rings are not hard to find. The boards, you can find upgradable boards. Ape, I know makes one. I believe um, Seventh Element makes one as well. So boards you can find. Phoenix, I believe use the same one as a G3. So if you're wanting to upgrade the Phoenix, you can get a, I believe it's a G3. Don't quote me on that, so please make sure you ask either Dangerous Power or your store before you buy them. But I'm pretty sure they use the same uh, bolt, or excuse me, feed neck um, threads. The next thing you have is the eyes. You can buy um, stock 
G3 eyes or Virtue eyes. The Virtue eyes for the Dangerous Power G3 work for the Dangerous Power or the Dangerous Power threshold. So if you're wanting laser eyes, you can buy those. I think that's about it. The only part that you cannot find is triggers as far as upgrades go and stuff like that. Triggers are almost impossible to find. I believe Ape does make one that comes with their board, but it's not necessarily upgrade. This is a, it's a optical switch, not a micro switch. Ape boards use the micro switch, so they have to come with their own triggers, but I don't think it's an actual upgrade. So other than that, I believe that's the only thing. Now if you say you damage your reg, you're probably out of a gun. And the reason why I say that is because I've yet to see parts sold for this as far as outer parts. ASAs, it uses the dovetail, dovetail mount or direct mount. I believe you can put a direct mount on here too, but it use, does use the dovetail, so you can hook any dovetail or T rail system uh, on off. I mean, CP, any of them you want. So I think that pretty much covers that. So overall, a very nice gun. Uh, low maintenance, extremely low maintenance, uh, super great efficiency as far as for a, not necessarily if you're going to be playing a tournament, as in going out there and shooting off a of 48, but hey, if you got a 68 on there, I don't think you're going to have any problems. Efficiency is great on it. The kick is nothing, I mean, next to nothing on this gun, so you're not going to have any up the gun coming out rising up on you or anything like that overall fantastic gun I would definitely recommend these guns if you can find them they are very rare so I mean if you can find one and it's going for cheap hey it's a collector's item I mean here in a couple of years you won't have these guns so basically that's it I would probably give this gun for the uh, range it's in now I can't say anything about price because price will vary being they aren't in production but overall as the gun itself, I would say the only downgrade to it is the trigger, and that is very minimal. So, I mean, overall, great gun, super gun. If you want, if you like dangerous power, if you like the milling on this gun, definitely worth it to buy. And probably overall, I would give it a probably a nine point of nine out of ten, just for the gun. I mean, super gun, awesome for anything you're really looking for. So I hope this review helped. I will hopefully be getting some of these up for you guys more often. I want to thank you for watching. If you like these videos, please please like it, uh, thumbs up it, whatever you want to call it. If you like my videos, please subscribe. I'm going to be getting as many more videos up as I can. And as always, if you have any questions, please leave me a comment. I will gladly get back with you if I know the answer, or if I don't, I will gladly see if I can find out. So thank you very much for watching guys and have a nice day.